Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creation Podcast, a show where we discuss the science that confirms scripture. I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers for tuning in. I'm your host, Ivana, and my guest today is Dr. Timothy Clary, ICR research scientist and geologist. I'm glad you're here today, Dr. Clary. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. Well, Dr. Clary, we wanted to talk to you about plate tectonics. And before we get into that, can you explain what are these tectonic plates? Well, the Earth seems to be broken into about maybe 20 different plates, but about seven or eight major plates. Okay. And a plate is composed of the crust of the Earth. So wherever you go mm-hmm. you're on the Earth, there's ocean crust under the ocean. Mm-hmm. There's continental crust under the continents. It's really two different types of crust. Below that, there's a little bit of the mantle that's included. So the very uppermost mantle mm-hmm. is kind of fused to the crust, whether it's in the ocean or the continents, and that becomes the tectonic plate. So they go down about 60 miles. Uh, you know, the continental crust is thicker, Okay. Ocean crust is thinner, but they all go down about 60 miles, and they all mm-hmm. kind of equalize out at that level. So there's these cold, brittle plates. The outer surface of the Earth is the coldest. It gets hotter as you go deeper. Mm-hmm. And so these plates kind of jostle around. Even today, they move around a few centimeters or a few inches per year. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that. So when we talk about mm-hmm. plate tectonics and the Earth, you said, mm-hmm. is divided by several of them, mm-hmm. and they're still moving today. So what does that mean for us? Well, in terms of creation science, we believe that these plates moved really rapidly during the flood year about 4,500 years ago. Today, they're moving just a little bit, kind of a residual movement, because these big plates, again, being about 60 miles thick, moving around quite rapidly during the flood year. And Dr. John Baumgartner has shown quite conclusively that with his computer models back in the 90s, he showed Mm -hmm. it's one of the most powerful computers and working for a government uh, research lab. He was able to use these computers Mm -hmm and it showed that you can get what he calls runaway subduction, or in other words, rapid plate movement. And so these plates were moving several miles per hour during the flood year. Mm-hmm. You would get really rapid movement of the plates. The math all worked out. No one's ever disputed his math or his model. They just kind of choose to ignore it because mm-hmm. it goes against the mainstream science. Mm-hmm. But if you go back about 80 years, mainstream science didn't believe in any plate tectonics at all. There was no... Mm-hmm idea of plate movement, you know, people mm-hmm. look at the earth today, they don't see it moving. You, know, mm-hmm. you go outside and look, it's not moving. Mm-hmm. And so they've, finally after studying the oceans in the 1940s, after World War II and the 50s mm-hmm. and different times, they finally realized there's a lot of things happening in the ocean that can't be explained other than with some sort of plate movement. And so today they can measure with satellites the plates moving just a few maybe centimeters or a few inches per year, uh, mm-hmm. but that's all they believe. So they believe that happened throughout all of geologic time. And they go back, of course, millions and millions of years, Mm -hmm. saying that these plates took millions of years to move around. We believe as creation geologists, flood geologists, that the plates move very rapidly. John Baumgartner was correct, showing the plates would move really, really rapidly. Mm -hmm. And we we believe they did. But once they moved and used up the original ocean crust, see, the original ocean crust is much colder, we believe. And colder things are more dense. Mm -hmm. And so when you make old ocean crust, use that up, kind of consume that into the earth. Mm -hmm. And you make new ocean crust, which is hotter, it's more buoyant, like a hot air balloon. And so the newer and hotter crust couldn't be subducted. So once you used up all of the original ocean crust of the Earth, moving the continents around in the process, Mm -hmm. everything kind of stopped. And so today, everything's kind of come to a screeching halt. But it didn't quite stop because they're Mm -hmm. still moving a little bit because you imagine a semi-truck trying to stop. It takes a long time to stop. Mm -hmm. The more mass you have, the harder it is. And so these big plates are still moving slightly today. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing to me that secular or uniformitarian geologists didn't believe in plate movement at all. Now they don't want to believe that they right. move fast at one point in their history. <laughs> wow, that's very so interesting. We're, yeah, we're making some progress, I think. Yeah. On that, so can you explain how quickly they move? As John Baumgartner showed, it's, he calls it several meters per second, mm-hmm. or we could say several yards per second, which ends up being several miles per hour. So you can easily okay. make, in the year of the flood, you can easily make the entire new ocean crust at that rate. Mm-hmm. You know, the Atlantic Ocean, for example, opened up partway through the flood. The Pacific Ocean opened up partway through the flood. And if you look at the age of the crust, of the ocean and the continents today, we see the ocean crust is really new. Mm-hmm. Even secular scientists admit that the ocean crust is much younger than the oh. continental crust. And so mm-hmm. it appears the continental crust, much of which was probably part of the original creation, mm-hmm. the original ocean crust, kind of was consumed in the process of the flood. And I believe the rapid plate movement was the mechanism 
that God used mm -hmm. uh, to bring on the flood. And we can talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah. But the Plate Titanic's idea, there's so much that, that shows uh, the match between the geology of the continents matching up when you put them back together. Mm -hmm. And you can see the movement of the ocean crust. You can study the ocean ridges today, see they're still there. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it runs up through Iceland. You can still see there's still volcanic activity happening. But we believe during the flood year, that was happening really fast. Mm -hmm. And so you had rapid plate movement. Kind of it's moving, you know, again, several miles per hour. Yeah. So does that present an issue for anyone who doesn't hold to creationist view as far as the ocean floor seeming younger or newer than the continental plates? They kind of explain it away as that's just part of the, you know, evolution of the earth. Okay. Slowly over time, the earth kind of recycles itself. The ocean crusts come and go, come and go. Now, one problem the secular community has, and they call it the holy grail of geology, is mm -hmm. where did the continents come from? Mm -hmm. You know, the continents aren't really being created in this whole plate tectonic idea. Uh, you may get little slivers of new continental crust forming mm -hmm. uh, that are only maybe a few hundred miles wide. But to make a massive continent, all we see when we study the Earth, even if you're a secular, uniformitarian, evolutionary geologist, whatever you want to call them, they see the continents show up suddenly, early in Earth's history, and there they are. And they've moved around with the ocean crust coming and going through this yeah. subduction process and Mm -hmm. And maybe I should explain subduction to some people sure. that may not know what subduction is. Right, that's helpful. Subduction is that ocean crust. We never see really much continental crust because it's too buoyant and too thick. Mm -hmm. But the thinner ocean crust actually moves along, and you get two plates that kind of collide. Mm -hmm. Something's got to give. Right. And so yet one of them has to kind of push under the other. That's sub, you know, being going under subduction. Right. And so it's the older ocean crust. Talked about a little earlier, the mm -hmm. colder, older ocean crust, probably the original ocean crust of the earth, was very dense. And once you kind of cracked things open, mm -hmm. and we believe that might have actually initiated on the flood on Genesis 7 level, when it says the fountains of the great deep cracked open, mm -hmm. burst open all over the earth. Mm -hmm. That might have been the start of tectonic plates. And once these cracked open, one of the more dense sides that was unstable because you have more dense material near mm -hmm. the surface started to subduct. And exactly how that began, nobody quite understands. The secular community doesn't understand really how subduction begins either. Mm -hmm. Nor do we as creation geologists, but mm -hmm. we see the effects that it did happen. Yeah. We still see it happening today. We can actually study the uh, seismic tomography, they call it, over these subductive plates today. We can still see the subduction that goes down and kind of keeps bending down into the earth. And so the, the whole process of these, this older and colder ocean crust being subducted seems to make a lot of sense. The beauty of it all for a creation geologist or a flood geologist is as you make new ocean crust, not only is it newer and hotter, it's more buoyant and it expands. Mm -hmm. So it pushes up from below, it pushes the water up. Yeah. So the more ocean crust you make, the more the water level went up. And so as the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean were created mm -hmm. midway through the flood year, by day 150 you reached the maximum amount of crust being made, pushing the water up to its highest level, and went over the top of the highest hills. Mm -hmm. And so really I think it was the mechanism of, of rapid plate motion, rapid new ocean crust being formed in the process. Mm -hmm. It's really just ocean crust coming and going. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of the old crust, making new ocean crust, and the process that pushed yeah. everything up from below. Mm -hmm. So you have a systematic flooding, a progressive flood. And that's what we see in the rocks. The, the research I get to do yeah. looking at the sediments across the continents, mm -hmm. you can see a progressive flood that the ocean really was coming up from below. Wow. And even the secular geologists believe that. They believe that. Uh. They recognize six floods. They just don't think there was one big flood. They believe right. there were six floods over millions of years of time in between mm -hmm. because they have to make everything slow over millions of years like we see today, just a few centimeters right. per year. So they believe that even pushed up the ocean. So our thoughts mm -hmm. on science and their thoughts on science aren't really that different in terms of the main mechanism and the mm -hmm. processes. We just believe, of course, right. that the math shows there would be runaway or rapid subduction during the year of the flood. Wow, I actually did not know mm -hmm. that about mm -hmm. secular scientists believing mm -hmm. that that would have happened, different floods. And you kind of hit into that a little bit, but as far as the creationist mm -hmm. worldview and understanding plate mm -hmm. tectonics, how do those two go together? There still is some pushback from some creationists. And most, the, most of the creation geologists have been taught and shown that the evidence that really backs plate tectonics, and really, mm -hmm. you know, it's really the oceans that unlocked it all in the, again, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Kind of the Cold War caused us to study the oceans. We didn't even have mm -hmm. an ocean map of the ocean floor mm -hmm. anywhere until... 1962, I think it was, or 63. Right. So we had, you know, maps of the coastal areas and offshore, but we never had a complete ocean map. 
And now we have satellites that help us do that. And mm -hmm. You can see all these cracks and fractures that line up. As mm -hmm. the plates spread, you can see these fractures that go across from one side of the ocean to the other. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of evidence and also the matching of the continents, the matching mm -hmm. of different things. Oils even across South America match up with the oil chemistry in Africa wow. from north to south. So you can see some differences, mm -hmm. but when you put them back together, they match up perfectly. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of, lot of evidence that shows that plate tectonics really did happen. And the strong evidence we have that it happened quickly, of course, is John Baumgartner's research showing this mm -hmm. in a computer model. But that's actually been verified with that seismic tomography where they shoot kind of seismic reflection data over a large area. When they mm -hmm. look at those subducted plates today, like in the Pacific Ocean, you can see the slabs go all the way down. Some of them go down to the top of the core. Oh, wow. But many of them go down deep, you know, hundreds of miles into the mantle. And they're the same density as they are at the surface. And the same mm -hmm. density implies that they're the same temperature. So these slabs going down mm -hmm. are actually still cold. Mm -hmm. They're way deep in the earth. And if they're moving just a few centimeters or inches per year like this much, mm -hmm. they should have assimilated and, and been cooked by now. They shouldn't mm -hmm. still show cold slabs deep, mm -hmm. deep, deep down in the mantle. Okay. As I mentioned, some of them go all the way down to the core. Yeah. And so if they're really moving slow, we shouldn't see them. Yeah. There shouldn't be that density difference. It should have all got very, very mm -hmm. hot. But every time they shoot seismic over these subduction zones, we see same density in the surface all mm -hmm. the way down. And so to me, it's as close to proof as you can get in geology that mm -hmm. there really was runaway subduction, runaway mm -hmm. plate tectonics that took place. Again, historic sciences, like I work in every day, you can't really prove 100% anything. Mm -hmm. But there's some strong indicators that this process really did happen. And to me, this explains the flood. Again, the more ocean crust, mm -hmm. the higher the water went. And that's exactly what we see in the sediments. Right. There's a perfect correlation. And if you read Genesis 7, you read through that chapter how it's a, it's a progressive flood that went from you know, the 40 days when the ark starts to flow, and then you go mm -hmm. up and it went higher, went exceedingly higher, mm -hmm. and eventually talks about going over the highest right. hills around day 150. So again, the flood wasn't just a 40-day flood. Right. A lot of, I teach at some Christian schools and mm -hmm. these... The, the, the poor students, <laughs> 75, 80% of them will say that the flood was 40 days because right. that's what they're taught in Bible school, singing mm -hmm. these cute little songs. But, right. but the flood was not a local flood at all. It was a global, right. all-encompassing judgment. Yeah. It, it took a long time to reach the high point. Humans were probably still alive till almost day 150, if not to day 150, when the mm -hmm. water went over the top. So mm -hmm. it must have been a horrific time to yeah. you know, reject what Noah was telling people. Yeah. Get on the ark, get on the ark. It's going to be a global flood. Nobody believed him except his own immediate family. Right. So we had how many on the ark? We had eight people. See, I was quizzing you. Yeah. Eight people on the ark. <laughs> Only eight people in the entire world believed, and there yeah. might have been a billion people on the earth at that time. Yeah. So you're looking at over 1,600 years or so since the creation. Even at a modest birth rate, you can easily get a billion people. Mm -hmm. and, but only eight people believed. And so all those people mm -hmm. that didn't get on, you know, their fates were sealed once God shut the door of the ark. Yeah. And so there was a lot of regret, I'm sure, for a long time mm -hmm. because you had months and months and months before yeah. the water reached its highest levels. Mm -hmm. So it would have been awful. I mean, you, it's just mm -hmm. today, you look back, you're like, how could they know that? How could they not see it? But today, people don't believe there was a global flood today. Mm -hmm. Most people don't accept it. Even many Christians yeah. don't want to believe there was a global flood because they're taught old earth. They're taught millions of years, billions mm -hmm. of years, and slow movements of plates. But in reality, when you look at the science, the mm -hmm. tomography, you, know, you see there is strong evidence that the earth and the plates moved really rapidly just a few thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible tells us. Yeah, I think that's interesting to point out how the flood, you know, there was rain involved, mm -hmm. but the plate tectonics mm -hmm. really play a big role in that. So that's really interesting to point that out. Well, that's, that's a good point because it does talk about the fountains of the deep. Mm -hmm. And so there was some water coming right. up from the mantle or wherever you have, you know, with the volcanic activity mm -hmm. probably associated with those fountains. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't really separate the two. But yeah. I think a lot of the water was already the water that was in the pre-flood oceans mm -hmm. that just got pushed up higher and higher. But there was some contribution from the fountains as well. And one other thing that's interesting, I think you might find fascinating, is Earth is the only planet mm -hmm. that has tectonic plates. You know, there's other planets with fractures and cracks where they're cooling. Right. But none of the other planets, apparently, in our solar system have... Mm -hmm evidence of moving plates, the mm -hmm. plates that moved in the past. And I think that's, again, because Earth is the only planet that really experienced a global flood. Yeah.
That is interesting. And I don't know, maybe this is speculation mm -hmm. for me to ask this question, talking about how there was rapid mm -hmm. plate movement during the flood and then it slowed down. So do you think that they will ever come to a complete stop? That's a good question. <laughs> I've I thought about that once or twice. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know. It may take a few thousand more right. years. I'd have to. I think some people have estimated that, and I've heard some people say that we're still in the kind of the waning phases of the flood in some ways because wow. it was only like 4,500 years ago. Yeah, the movements that took place there. You know, you're moving stuff around the globe. Yeah, you know, things are halfway around the Earth, so there's a lot of significant movement, mm -hmm. and for that to kind of settle back down. That's why we still see a lot of earthquakes. We still see volcanoes erupting. You know, during the flood, we think there was a lot more, obviously, earthquakes because right. a lot more plate movement more rapidly mm -hmm. and a lot more volcanic activity at the end as well. And so all this is kind of settling down. So there still are volcanoes. There's still earthquakes. And there's periods where the earth shows a lot more earthquakes. There's 10 years there will be a lot more earthquakes, and then it kind of goes up and down in cycles. Same thing with volcanic activity. Mm -hmm. And so, the, you know, it talks about the end times. I know saying there's going to be an increase in some of these things. There may be an increase, uh, but that may be, you know, God's hand in that one. Wow. Well, that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. in light of a global catastrophic mm -hmm. flood. And I think you've shed a lot of light. Do you have any other final thoughts or things to share? Well, a lot of people, you know, still in the creation community debate, you know, what caused mm -hmm. the, the flood. What was the mechanism of the flood? There's other ideas out there. Uh, but to me, plate tectonics has so much evidence to back it yeah. up. And you have the seismic tomography now showing that subduction really did happen. And so, you know, that all happened in the last 10, 20 years. Uh, so prior to that, you know, I think the creation community was a little more mixed. But most of the creation mm -hmm. geologists now have kind of gotten on board with plate tectonics. And the, the evidence does stack up. But it makes a lot of sense because it helps us really explain mm -hmm. how the flood happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that more ocean crust you have. Uh, the more the water went higher and higher, and that's exactly what we see. Yeah. To me, it's it's amazing connection between the sediments that I'm studying on the continents, mm -hmm. you know, a progressive flood, and you see the progressive creation of ocean crust. And more ocean crust means pushing the sea from up from below, just like your bathtub going up from below. Yeah. It's going to push the water higher and higher. And so these tsunami-like waves are being generated by the earthquakes from the plate movement, kept getting higher and higher and higher as the flood progressed, and eventually. And when, once the original ocean crust was consumed, mm -hmm. you lost that density contrast. You now have pretty much hot ocean crust everywhere, and everything kind of just stopped. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it explains how you can flood the land. And that, well, one thing I should add is how where the water go? Well, eventually those ocean mm -hmm. crust pieces started to cool. And so we see today even the oldest ocean crust is the deepest ocean crust. And so the crust in the western, you know, way over in the Pacific Ocean is very, very deep. Because that's far from those ridges, and so some of the older crust. So it's had more time to cool. Mm -hmm. As it cools, it sank, and it drew the water back off the land. And so the mm -hmm. ocean kind of right. being pushed up as you make new crust, and as mm -hmm. it cooled, it sank again, and that yeah. helped bring the water off. Yeah. And so to me, the water kind of came from the oceans and went back to the oceans. Yeah. And then, you know, God promised he would never let that happen again, and he right. kind of shows today, like he talks about in Psalms, you know, where the water's going to be. Yeah. He kind of locked it in because the plates today are moving so slowly they're not really causing a lot of water to go up and down. Wow, that is excellent. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your time, Dr. Clary, and oh, for explaining welcome. the basics Ho of those. Hopefully it wasn't too fast. When <laughs> no, I don't think information so. A little bit of time, but no. to me it's fascinating that the plate tectonics, or catastrophic plate tectonics, we call it as, as creation or flood yeah. geologists, makes so much sense. Yeah, I think it's great. So thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. And to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you can find this podcast on YouTube or other areas where you might stream your podcast. And if you have any questions about additional topics, feel free to send us a message on social media. Be sure to leave a review and rate us so that we can share this information with others. And don't forget to subscribe. But I'm Ivana, and we'll see you guys next time on the Creation Podcast. <laughs>